What's up guys? I'm Dwayne and I am Black Board Gaming where I teach you about all these great board games that are out there waiting to be played by you and yours. I'm a simple man. Don't want a hey guys, today I'm excited to tell you about a game that soon will be available for pre-order. And that game is called Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest. This game is designed by Paolo Mori and published by Stonemeyer Games. Let's go to the table for an overview of how this game is played. Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest is a hand management set collection game for one to six players where the players take on the roles of sky pirates. To set up the game, we will first place the island board in the middle of the table on the side that depicts what kind of voyage we want to have. Do we want to have a calm, friendly voyage? Or we could place the board on this side that will give us a stormy, more complex voyage that's a little bit more cutthroat. We can also take these blue tiles and place them down on the board in place of the ones that's already on the board to make the voyage uncharted. Let's just stick with the stormy voyage for this overview. The next thing we would do is take the 48 loot tokens and put them in this cloth bag. Each player will claim a deck of 40 character cards of their chosen color and they will not shuffle this deck. They will also get a score dial of their matching color set to zero and a graveyard tile and they will place these items in front of them. We're setting up for a four player game so we take all six of the reputation tokens even if it's only four players and we will randomly place them on the reputation track. The next thing we would do is draw loot tokens from the bag and place them on these spots based on the number of players. So we're setting up for a four player game. So each of these days is gonna have four loot tokens. So if you see there's day one, day two, day three, day four. So the game is gonna last three weeks and each week is gonna last a certain number of days. So the first week, the voyage is gonna last four days the second week is going to last five days. And the third and final week, the voyage is going to last all six days. Next, we would designate a player who will then shuffle up their deck of 40 character cards. And they will reveal six of those characters off the top of their deck. Then each of the other three players will search their deck for those same character cards, removing them and placing them in their hand. So at the start of the game, all four players will start the game with the same six character cards. Then before we start our voyage, each player will gain a certain amount of the blooms based on the position of their matching color token on the reputation track. So like I said, the game is going to last three weeks and on each week, the players are going to go out on a voyage to this island to try compete to try to get these loot tokens and place it on their ship. So there are seven loot tokens that can be got. There is your chest, your hook, your saber, map, amulet, barrel, and your relic. And when getting these tokens, they have certain effects that go off at certain times uh, during that day. So if you look at the back of the scorebook, uh, the rule book rather, you see there's a daytime. So daytimes, that's really for the characters. But then you also got dusk, nighttime, and anchor. So if you look down here, like let's say for example this barrel. If a player gets this barrel, dusk is the same time they get in this barrel and they can discard this token to gain two reputation. 
So when gaining to reputation, let's say it's the red player who's gaining the reputation. He would take his token, move it up to, move everybody else back, and move to that spot now. Now, if ever he had to gain reputation and he can't go any further, he would get, get one to bloom. Same thing like, let's say, for blue. If blue lost reputation, he can't go any further, so he would lose one to bloom. And the whole object of the game is to get the most to blooms by the whole end of the game, because that's your points. So, let's say, look at here, the saber. The saber has a dusk ability. At the same time you grab that saber, you discard a character of your choice from an adjacent player's ship. So you pretty much taking out other people's characters, sending them to their graveyard. This chest has an anchor ability. You gain four doubloons plus one for each of your map tokens. And that happens at the end of the week. Same with this uh, amulet. You gain one doubloon for each reputation token to the right of yours. This relic here has a nighttime at the end of each day you lose a doubloon so you want to try to figure out a way to get rid of that relic because you're going to be losing money on that those things are cursed so that's pretty much what your, the players are doing starting off the first day the players will simultaneously look at their hand of six character cards and choose one that they're going to send out to the island and place that character face down in front of them. So let's take a look at these cards. You got your first mate. Now this first mate has a daytime ability, which I'll get into how daytime abilities work in a little bit. And they would lose one doubloon for each character in your ship. There are no characters on my ship yet, so th this would be a perfect one to play right now. He also has an anchor ability at the end of the week, gain one doubloon for each character in your ship. Here you got the aristocrat. I wanted to say aristocat, but aristocrat. <laughs> and her daytime ability is gain two reputation. She also has an anchor ability. This armor has a dusk ability. If you gain a saber or a hook token, gain two reputation. Right now, the uh, loot tokens that are available for the first day is two barrels, one relic, and one amulet. So. It wouldn't be a good idea to play him yet. The Brute discard the rightmost character on the island, which may be himself, <laughs> and that character's owner gains one reputation. Smuggler, daytime ability, gain a loot token from the current day, then place the smuggler in your ship. Last but not least, the Barkeep. She has a nighttime ability that goes off at the end of each day, so she would gain one to bloom. So this first week has four days, so she could have you four doubloons. And then she has an anchor ability, gain an additional doubloon for each of your barrel tokens. So she could work out for you right now, if you play her right now, unless somebody on another ship pulls one of them sabers and something should tragically happen to her. Once all characters have secretly chosen their character cards, they will reveal them and place them out onto the island in ascending order from left to right based on their rank. So the black player played their barkeep who has a rank of 8. The brute from the blue player has a rank of 17. And the red and green player had both played their first mates and their rank is 38. Now whenever matching ranks have been played, we would take a look at the reputation track and whoever has the highest reputation will place their character to the furthest right. So if you, in this case, the green player has a higher rank than red, so their player would go furthest to the right, which is not a good thing for them for this day because then we would activate any daytime abilities and those are activated left to right. So the barkeep doesn't have a daytime ability. The brute has a daytime ability, discard the rightmost character on the island, and that character's owner gains one reputation. That will happen to be the green player's first mate. So he got beat up, and he's returned to the green player and placed in there on that graveyard tile face down. But because that happened to him, he gets one reputation. Now, notice that the green player is at, high, at the highest uh, reputation, so he would just get one to bloom. 
Then the first mate, his daytime ability, lose one coin for each character in your ship. One to bloom rather. He has there's no characters on the red uh, player ship. So that doesn't pop off. Once we've activated the daytime abilities, we'll go into the dusk phase. And so the dusk phase involves the characters from right to left, highest rank to lowest, will gain loot tokens from that day. So the first mate, he decides he wants to get this barrel. Now, this barrel has a dusk ability that can go off right now. And you may discard this token to gain two reputation. The red player decides to do that. So he returns that barrel to the bag and he moves his reputation up to moving those back. And then the red player grabs his character, places it in front of him on his ship. The blue player decides they want to get this amulet. And they're getting this amulet because the amulet has an anchor ability at the end of the week. You gain one to bloom for each reputation token to the right of yours. If you see the blue player is furthest to the left, so he could potentially get five to blooms if he kept his reputation there. And then he grabs his character. The black player, the barkeep, they don't want this relic. Because that relic has a night time where you lose one to bloom. They don't want that. And you're trying to get the most of blooms to win the game. So the barkeep decides to get this barrel. And she's going to keep that barrel. You know. So because at the, her end of the week ability, anchor ability, she gains an additional doubloon for each of her barrel to, of the barrel tokens. So black player grabs their character. This relic didn't get claimed by anybody. So it just gets returned to the bag. Then we would activate any nighttime abilities. So remember the barkeep has a nighttime ability, gain one to bloom. And then once that's done, we would go into the next day, start that off, and each player will again simultaneously choose a character card that they want to play for that day. At the end of day four, the first week will be over and we would go into our end of voyage phase. The first thing we would do is activate any anchor abilities on our character cards and on our loot tokens based on the loot tiles on the board. And we would collect any of the blooms owed to us. Once that's done, we would count up our blooms. So here I got 24 and then we would adjust this accordingly. So 24. So now that you got this set, whenever something happens where you will lose the blooms like a relic, this is never touched. This is in your treasure chest. Then we will get rid of the blooms, return them to the supply, return these loot tokens to the bag, and then take our characters on our ships that we play and place them in our graveyard face down. Next, we will prepare for the next voyage by repopulating the island with loot tokens, adding loot tokens to day five. The designated player will shuffle their character deck and draw six new character cards and reveal them to the other players, and the other players will search their character deck and find those exact character cards and place those in their hand. Now remember moving forward, there are two characters that you didn't play from the first week. So now everybody's hand is a little bit different. The players will gain the blooms based on their position on the reputation track. And then we can start the next voyage by each player simultaneously choosing a character that they want to send out to the island to get loot tokens. At the end of day six of the third week, the game will be over. Once the players have done their end of voyage phase, whoever has the most doubloons in their treasure chest will be the winner of Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest. When I first got into board gaming, one of the earliest games that I purchased was the original Libertalia. Uh, I learned about Libertalia by watching uh, Will Wheaton's Tabletop. 
And he did a playthrough of this game with uh, Seth Green and his wife, Claire. And I can't remember the other lady's name, but uh, she played Nebula in Guardians of the Galaxy. And after watching that video, I immediately went and bought this game. I mean, it didn't take much nudging because I already love pirate-themed games. But watching them play this game had me cracking up. You know, they're just the banter going back and forth and everything. So I bought this game, and I still have it in my collection. So I already love Libertalia. Now, when I found out that they were, the Stonemeyer was doing a reprint of Libertalia, I was excited. And I was very appreciative. And there were a few reasons why, you know. So the first reason is these days there are a lot of new board gamers out there who have not experienced Libertalia because this game is out of print. It's hard to find. So when I, like I said, when I found out he was reprinting it, I was excited that other people will be able to experience this game. You know, uh, I'm I was appreciative of the upgrade, you know, the component upgrade. The original Libertalia was like cardboard chips and everything. And it had a board where you track your doubloons. This one, the loot tokens are these the ceramic tiles like you would see in Azul. Like my wife saw them on the table when I was playing and she thought they were Starbucks Starburst. And I was like, no, they're not. Get away. You know. <laughs> leave my leave my leave my Starburst alone. You know. Um I love the uh the treasure chest is how you um count up your doubloons now. So at the end of each voyage, you put your doubloons in that treasure chest, and it's like you buried your treasure. They can't touch it now. So I, I really i am appreciative of that. I'm appreciative of the art style. You know, the first game was gritty, and it, it fit the theme of the game. This one is in a, a more fantastical world of sky pirates. Now, a pirate is a pirate is a pirate. I get that, but I think more people will gravitate towards this game because the colorful art, you know, um, it's just, it's just in a fantasy world. So the other thing that I'm appreciative of is some of the changes in the game. Like in the original game, you played out nine, you drew nine characters and you only had 30 characters in a deck. In this game, you draw six characters, and you got 40 different characters in your deck. So there's a lot more variability in this version. Also, the reputation track. The original game, if you had characters of the same rank out on the island, they had a secondary number. You went by that number. And this one is based on who's higher in reputation. So that's another thing that you need to pay attention to when playing this game. And there's some other subtle changes that I really, really appreciate. So, with that said, yeah, Libertarian wins a Gale Crest. I would say get this game. I love the original Libertaria. It's not leaving my collection. This one, I'm probably going to play this one more because, like I said, the, uh, the new upgrades and the components... <clears throat> excuse me, and the art would draw more people in. So, that's how I feel about Libertalia. If you like the contents of this uh, video, feel free to hit the like button. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'm Dwayne. I am Blackboard Gaming. And I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.